Hallelujah. Well, welcome to another session. This is Andrew Shreve, and uh, this session today is called "He Restores My Soul." And you can find this uh, if you go to my website, andrewshreve.org. Click on Partner Letters and click on April 2012, and you can read there the teaching that I'll be giving to you uh, today. Hallelujah. Let's just pray first and get the blessing of God upon this uh, teaching. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the anointing of your Holy Spirit, Lord. And we welcome your Holy Spirit now to come upon me and every listener, Lord, to bring forth the revelation and the truth that you desire that our soul be restored, that we be restored to you and that our, our all of our thoughts and our heart be in unity with you, that we can flow with you and receive the great blessing that you've given to the world and also be an agent or a channel of that blessing to others. So we thank you for it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So uh, we see this uh, scripture in Psalm 23 where verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still waters. In verse 3 it says, He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. Hallelujah. So, Psalm 23 is a prophetic psalm describing the blessings which come to the Christian through, through following the Good Shepherd who is the Lord Jesus Christ. In John 10 and verse 11, Jesus said these words. He said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd. Hallelujah. And so the Lord is my shepherd is a reference really prophetically written before Jesus Christ came but to the Lord Jesus Christ. So the psalm, if you study it, it contains blessings for every realm of our lives including not being in want, being in a state of tranquility, peace and abundance, being brought back into the family of God, having godly leadership for our lives, safety and protection, abundant provision and blessing, daily mercy and goodness, and eternal life. Psalm 23 gives details concerning the shalom blessing of the Lord, which is contained within the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So often we hear the word shalom, and shalom is, is um, spoken of, in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. Isaiah 9 verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Shalom. In English they translate that peace. But it's the Prince of Shalom. And then over in Isaiah 52, so Jesus is referring to Jesus, the son that is born. Jesus is the prince of Shalom. And over in Isaiah 52 verse 7, it says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publishes Shalom. There it is, that publishes Shalom. Again, translated peace. That bringeth good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. And Paul the Apostle, when he's talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ, he quotes from Isaiah 52 verse 7. Where, where, and this is what Paul, where it talks about publishing Shalom. And in Romans 10, 15, the Apostle Paul says this. Romans 10, 15. How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of of peace, or the gospel of shalom. Hallelujah. And bringeth glad tidings of good things. And so, this psalm really talks about the shalom blessing of the Lord. However, this month, we're going to focus on the blessing which says in the psalm, He restores my soul. Now, He, in the Hebrew, is referring to Jehovah, who is the Lord God. Now, Jehovah is 
the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Jehovah. In John chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, It says the Word was God. And then in verse 14 it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Word was God. The Word was God. Well, the Word is God. And the Word was made flesh, or God was made flesh. So God took on human form. That's a reference to Jesus Christ and dwelt among us. God dwelt among us in human form, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is Jehovah. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, 1 Timothy chapter 3, and this is where you have a distinction with the, the um, Jehovah's Witness. They, they, they're not actually Christian. Um, they will say that Jehovah is not Jesus. They, they will say Jesus Christ is not Jehovah. But the Bible clearly says that Jesus Christ is God Almighty. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Uh, 1 Timothy 3.16 God was manifest in the flesh. There it is. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. See, Jesus was received up into glory. He rose from the dead and he was received up. So God was manifest in the flesh. So Christian doctrine is very clear that that Jehovah God, Almighty God, was manifest in the flesh, became a human being. 1 John 5.20 says, And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true, even in His Son, even in His Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Okay? So he's referring to Jehovah. He restores my soul, our soul. The Lord brings restoration to our soul. The word restore in Hebrew is shub, which means to turn back, to fetch home again, to recover, to rescue, and to retrieve. So he restores my soul. He's really saying that he's bringing us back to himself. He's recovering us. He's fetching us home. He's retrieving us. And the word soul is nefesh, which means a breathing creature, heart, mind, person, and self. So it has the idea of a person, but also their heart and their mind. So he restores my soul has the meaning of the Lord rescuing us or bringing us back to himself. And implicit in this bringing us back to the Lord includes the restoration of our heart, our mind and our thought life back to God. So it's not just bringing us back into his family, but also restoring our mind and our heart to be at unity and oneness with God. So in the book of Hebrews, Paul the Apostle describes a new covenant in Hebrews 10.6. He says this, This is a covenant that I'll make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I'll put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. So the new covenant implies that the law of God will, or the words of God will be in our heart and mind. It's not just getting born again. It's not just coming into God's kingdom, but it's also getting his word into our heart and mind. So included in the process of the Lord bringing us back to himself is the return of our heart and mind to be one and in unity with the laws and words of the Lord. When we become born again into God's kingdom, our spirit is made a new creature. Okay, That's the part that's brand new. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh, 2, Timothy, uh, sorry, 2 Corinthians 5.17 um, The old is gone and the new has come. I'll just read that, get the exact words for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That's the spirit man. Behold, uh, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And then in Ephesians 4, 24, the apostle writes, Put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So this new man is referring to our new spirit, which is created after God in holiness and true righteousness. We are a new righteous Holy Spirit. Okay, This, this born again process, however, is just the beginning. 
It's not the end, it's the beginning. The Christian life involves an ongoing process of godly education. The Bible instructs the Christian in Romans 12 to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, born again Christian says, be transformed. So born again Christians, you need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can experience the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In other words, if you do not renew your mind, you will not experience the good, acceptable and perfect will of God. And that's why many Christians wonder why God uh, is not doing the good and acceptable and perfect will, why they're not receiving the promises of God, why they're not blessed to the degree that they feel they should be. And the reason is because they haven't put the work in to renew their mind. They haven't become transformed. So there is a physical and mental transformation which the Lord desires to bring into our lives, which is only achieved as we renew our mind with God's word. So think of it in, in think of the Christian life in terms of family. The Lord has redeemed us, He's brought us back into His house and His family, which is the body of Christ. So now we're sitting in the Lord's house, we're in Christ Jesus. But due to our previous life of sin in the world and our ongoing exposure from the mental pollution which is in the world, our thoughts and mind may not be in harmony with the Lord. Even though we're born again, many Christians, their mind and their thoughts are not harmonious with God because of all this stuff going on in the world and their previous life and bad thought patterns and bad habits and, and, and the sin that's everywhere around us. Christians are not in harmony with the Lord. Actually, many Christians, may, or we may not be very nice to be around as our heart may be filled with thoughts of fear and unbelief. We may be like a rebellious teenager who is physically at home, they're still in the house of their parents, but mentally sitting there in rebellion to their parents' home. The Lord, however, as our loving, patient, heavenly Father, has a vision for us of restoring every aspect of our life. You see, God is love. And if you look at love in 1 Corinthians 13, the Bible says that God is agape in 1 John. And then it talks about agape and it says, we can put God in here. God suffers long. God is kind. God does not envy. He not, does not vaunt himself. He's not puffed up. Does not behave himself unseemly. Seeks not his own. Is not easily provoked. Thinks no evil. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. God bears all things. He believes all things. He hopes all things. He endures all things. God never fails. So God is believing in us. He's enduring with us. He's long-suffering with us, even though we may be in rebellion as Christians. So the Lord doesn't just want us sitting in His house, possibly still in rebellion to His words. He wants our mind and heart to be one with His, to be in unity with the words of the Lord. God wants our soul fully restored to Him. Now I'm talking about soul now in the term of our our heart, our mind, our imagination, and our will. But So we have a part to play in the restoration of our soul. Our part is not just to sit passively in the house of the Lord, you know, watching TV or, or looking at Facebook, but rather to be active in the renewing of our mind with His Word. God, we need to be active every day renewing our mind. The word translated renewing in Romans 12.2 means renovation, according to Strong's Dictionary. So renovation... Is, is the stripping back of old things and putting in new. So after we become a Christian, we're given the task of renovating our mind. That's our job. That's our, our, our work, is to renovate our mind. I came to this realization many years ago that every day for the rest of my life, I would need to work on the renovation of my mind. Because we're in this world, we're constantly bombarded with ungodly words and thoughts and imaginations. We're not to run away from the world as a reclusive monk they did in the Middle Middle Ages. They ran away from the world. But we're rather to love and minister to the world. We're to face this world and engage this ungodly world. But to do that, we need a strong heart if we want to be effective. Otherwise, the world will, be, will overpower us. So to effectively engage with the world, we need to get a strong heart. The way we do that is to daily renew our mind through the process of meditation of God's Word. Now you say, then you go, so what part of God's word should we meditate to get this strong heart to be able to be effective in our, uh, in our dialogue with the world? Well, Philemon 1.6 says, 
the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So Paul's writing here to Philemon and saying, in Philemon and saying that if you want to be effective in the communication of your faith, if you want to be effective in your uh, discourse with the world and your engagement with the world, you are going to need to acknowledge all the good things which are in you in Christ Jesus. You need to strengthen your heart. You need to fill your heart with the knowledge of all the good things that God has placed inside you in Christ. Now, God's covenant promises are the details of those good things which are in us in Christ Jesus. So as we renovate our mind, our imagination and emotions, with God's promises, we are aligning or synchronizing ourselves with the Lord's words. Now you say, well, well, how can I do that? Well, you go to my website, andrewstreep.org, go to the shopping cart, get the book, The Sword of the Spirit. It's an overview of the best promises. That book you can use as a meditative tool to, to renew your mind and strengthen your heart. So now we're sitting in the Lord's house, once we do that meditation and continue in it every day, not in evil rebellion of unbelief and sin consciousness, but we are harmonized with the righteous, finished work of Christ and the manifold blessings of, of God's loving house. When our mind is renovated to the promises of our inheritance, we are more truly one with the Lord and our soul is restored. See, we're not just brought into the house, but through the meditation of God's of the good things which are in us in Christ, we are now sitting in the house of the Lord with our soul in harmony with God, accepting and acknowledging that we're healed, that all our needs are met, that we have safety, that we're led by the Spirit, that we have the blessing, that we're blessed with every spiritual blessing. So now we're in harmony with the house of the Lord. And this is what the Lord means when He says that He restores our soul. He wants us to be brought back into this place, not just of being born again, but being one with God and experiencing all the wonders and the blessing of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Pray with me. Father God, thank you that you are my good shepherd. Thank you that through faith in your son, Jesus Christ, you have brought me back to your house. You have restored my soul. Thank you for the realization that once I'm in your house, I have the ongoing daily task of renovating my mind with the good things which are in me in Christ Jesus, which are the covenant promises. Please open my understanding to the importance of this daily work of renewing and renovation of my mind. Please strengthen me to discipline myself, to meditate your promises every day. Then I'll be one who sits in your house receiving your good, acceptable and perfect will. I pray this. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Bless you, I love you, and I look forward to speaking with you again next month. Bye.